What What are you doing? I'm making the room smell nice. I like it. Good vibes. And you, you're kind of uh, you're, you're cleansing things, <laughs> right? You're cleansing the room. What's up, people? We are back again. This is is we we're getting to a, a more of a regular schedule, wouldn't you say? Yeah, we um this having having a dedicated area it makes it yeah, much easier. I like this. Uh, we are the Electric Batcast. This is Rachel. This is Kale. And uh, we run the Electric Bat Arcade in Tempe, Arizona. And we discuss um, operating an arcade, uh, dealing with uh, uh, pinball repair. What, what else do we talk about? Those are kind of, that's kind of what we do. The people, good, the good, good times. Good times. Uh, people, I need to give myself a little more. A little more monitor there. Oh, now we're talking. I like that. <laughs> um, cool. So here we are. Yeah. What, uh, before we get into the meat and potatoes of the cast. <laughs> um, the balls what, and rubbers. The balls and rubbers. The ring and rods. <laughs> the bells and chimes. Bells and chimes. Uh, we are, um, we, have, we have some cool events coming up. Yeah. One of them is... Uh, what is it called? Jarcade's Big Adventure? Uh, the Jarcade it, Birthday I, Bonanza. Is it his birthday? I think it's for his birthday. I think that's the reason he's doing it. Okay. So it's uh, Jar Jarcade Strikes Back Tournament. It's uh, it's five bucks for the entry. Um, he's having prizes, drinks, food. Um, he, usually, he brings like some, some cool snacks. Yeah. Jard throws one hell of a tournament. If you're in Arizona, come to this thing. April 6th. That's a Saturday. At uh, Manassas in 2024. Yeah. Uh, 6.30 p.m. Yep. One uh, very amazing thing. I just found this out today. Yeah. There is going to be... I don't know how he's structuring the tournament. We'll, we'll talk about that um, probably on, on our Instagram and Facebook. Um but or you just check out. I, it's going to be on the IFPA site. Yeah, ifpapinball.com, mm -hmm. or is it just ifpa.com? IFPA pinball. It is okay. Uh, I just found out today a random prize is going to be given away: uh, a dinner for two at the STK Steakhouse. STK Steakhouse in Scottsdale. Last time he did this, Mark Pearson won, and Mark took us. <laughs> Mark took us. This was amazing. Holy crap. This is a, a, a night to remember. You put on your good clothes for this. You, you put on your fancy clothes. It is, a, it is a beautiful restaurant with an incredible staff and amazing food. Yes. This holy, was Holy crap. Yeah, I want to win it now. The whole thing. You, you have your, 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 what is it called? Your, your beginning course, <laughs> the, you your, get... your middle course, and then a dessert. Yeah. And it is. Uh, so he, he, was, he was telling me that the way he's going to do this, once the tournament gets down to the final eight. Okay. Everybody can bet on, quote unquote, bet on who is going to win with their name on a raffle ticket. Okay. So, once, including the final eight, they can bet on themselves or someone cer else. Certainly, okay. And uh, when that person wins, the, all the people that bet on that, there's going to be a random drawing for those folks. Very, very cool. That is cool. I like it J because Jard is a gamesman. He's. I like this. Yeah, look at you. Look how excited you yeah. are. That's genuine excitement. I <laughs> I know genuine excitement when I see it on your face, and this is it. Absolutely, and, I am. I am so excited about this. Not only that, you, and you love STK Steakhouse. I do. Yeah, good deal. So we're gonna have to bet on different people. Well, oh yeah. But then we would have twice the. Oh gosh, how do we? You're gonna have to figure out how to rig this. I'm gonna have to figure out how to what what my best odds are, but it's gonna yeah. depend on who the final eight are. So uh, uh, again, that's um, April the sixth at uh, at six thirty. It's a Saturday at Electric Bat Arcade. That's going to be a lot of fun. Yes, uh, food and beverage and um, good times. Good times, all that good stuff. Yeah, his last his last party, Christmas party, w was killer. He brings in a killer crowd. Yeah. So Saturday, April sixth, six thirty p.m. Be there. Be there. Five bucks. Five, five bucks. That's a deal. Um. And we're going to have some great machines for people to play. Um, 
Anything else? What else is going on out there, Arcade? Oh, Chewy. Oh, yeah. On, uh, on um, Easter, this Sunday, is an all-classics edition uh-huh. of Chewy's world-famous Bounty Knockout. That's at noon. So that's right. We did an all-classics one last month, and it was so much fun. It went it went very quickly, mm-hmm. uh, you know, relative yeah. f- to that. And uh, there's not enough all-classics tournaments. You know, when you go to a show, sometimes there's a classics tournament, and that's always like the most fun tournament for me to play. So sure. I am very excited about the all classics edition of uh, Chewy's world famous bounty. Knockout. You took the words right out of my mouth. You always excel at classics. I love, I love classics. That's um, your thing. Classic ballets. Uh, there are not enough. Um, uh, look, I, I mean, I can't speak across the nation, but th- there are not enough, uh, all classics tournaments here in the Valley. Mm-hmm. Um, there used to be at Grumpy's, yeah. but I don't think Grumpy's is operating anymore. That that's what I yes. loved going there. I mean, all they have are classics, and that that was a lot of fun. Um, this is super cool. Well, yeah. well, you have Pulp Fiction in the classics uh, no. tournament, no? Because it's not a classic. It's not. It, it's masquerading as a, as a classic. <laughs> um, what about TNA? No, I don't not, think I will. Also, not a classic. Although based on the classic Dolly Parton, I will not have uh, Bond 60th in it either. I'm going to go. Uh, how legit did you know what I was going to ask? Because I, I, I can see your uh, thoughts. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. incense yeah. really, yeah. <laughs> you know, tied the room together. Uh, but what I was mentioning about based on uh, it's not really based on Dolly Parton, the uh, the TNA, but the the prototype is a is a Dolly Parton that was modified. Yeah, uh, that's the inline. I you think got the inline drops. The up. inline drops are the only thing that stayed in position. Maybe the flippers. I don't know. But um, <laughs> did, did you play the original TNA? I did. I played it at um, uh, during Expo, and mm-hmm. they had they had all three at the party at Pinball Life. How cool is that? Yeah. I've, I still have never been to that party. We might do it this year. Maybe, yeah. We're, we're going to Expo. Um, very good. Very good. Let me... Oh, most importantly, I forgot to put my uh, devices on focus mode because I don't want any uh, interruptions during this uh, recording. Yeah, you get all kind of messages. I don't I don't have to do that. That's right. <laughs> um, and quickly, before we go any further, let's mention our, our sponsors, uh, Marco Specialties. Yep, we get all your specialty and generic, all the pinball parts. They've right. got them. MarcoPinball.com. Head over there to uh, uh, get any uh, parts you need. We, we use those guys every week. Yeah. And I thank you. Also, thank you to Game Room Goodies. That's where we get all of our machines. And uh, man, they give us a lot of prizes. They gave us a bunch of prizes. We've been giving them out... Um, uh, we gave them out the last tournament. Yeah, lots, some lots of those stern, stern whiskey glasses with the pinballs a, stuck in the side. That's correct. Stern mm-hmm. apparel. And uh, man, and then at Zabcon, they gave us a, 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 cocktail, a cocktail table, table. a Namco, Namco. Uh, a cocktail table. And uh, our friend Ty won that. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much, Game Room Goodies. Go to GameRoomGoodies.com for all of your game room needs. Not just pinball. These guys do everything. Jukeboxes, uh, skee-ball, uh, basketball, um, what else they have? Oh, uh, crane like, games, like some raw thrill stuff, like the uh, yeah. What is that? That shooter uh, with a deer? D- oh, big big buck. big buck hunter. Yeah, you know, I I played a big buck hunter with our friend uh, Kent. Mm-hmm. We played through, and I kind of want this. Um, I'm, but Uh-oh. yeah, I'm I'm not so excited about the the subscription model. Yeah. It's forty bucks a month. Uh, but uh, big buck hunter, holy crap! It was a lot of fun. Kyle brought it. Yeah, they. They, uh, they, they earn. Yeah. And, um, we played the, the zombie, there's like a walking dead package. So if you're not into hunting. Right. They figured this out. You like can, you can hunt zombies. Not everybody wants to hunt big bucks. No, you know, yeah. they're not like into the five pointers or whatever. There you go. You know, the big old rack. M- mule deer and all that stuff. White tail. White tail. Hunt, um, <laughs> all that good stuff. Uh, so, um, if you want any of that good stuff, game room goodies has it. And if they don't have it in stock, they will find it for you. These guys are great. Um, and all- then once you buy it, mm-hmm. you can use your Stern Insider Connect. <laughs> Insider Connected. Oh, you buy a pinball machine. Yeah, you not, buy the not pinball the big machine. Hunter. Yeah. No, that's, uh, I'm, uh, that was a segue. That was a good one, too. That was a really good segue. It was so good, it almost threw me off. Uh, another great sponsor of the show, Stern Insider Connected. We, we've, been, um, we've been trying to get all these badges. We've been, um, not only that, we've been doing the March Madness. Yeah. 
We have been doing the we're, March we're, Madness. We're struggling to get Arizona yeah. up there on the board. Uh, we're doing our best. Yeah, we got uh, we got a lot of players in Arizona. We we, we need Eric Stone to come. You know, yeah. it'd be worth it to fly Eric Stone to the arcade. And then, and then to get our uh, Arizona numbers up, I bet he'd be down with that because he would. He's he's in the weather, and boy, do we have some beautiful wet weather. <laughs> yeah. Um, hey Eric, have you heard of yeah. Arizona weather? Yeah, yes, sir. D. We have we have the extremes. Yeah, come yeah. on out. But right now it's mild. It's, it's, yeah, beautiful. it's beautiful. It's mild. This is he would want to come out for this weather for in the, particular and tell us about it. Yeah. yeah, we've got one week left of spring training, so all the all the Canadians mm-hmm. and the Minnesotans and God, we whatnot. have had. Okay, so uh, for those of you don't, who don't know, and I didn't know this before I moved here, yeah. right now we have this baseball thing going on called spring training. <laughs> Case, and, and, if you've uh, heard of it, yeah. this baseball yeah. thing. <laughs> spring uh, training, you say? It is amazing. <laughs> all of the pinball fans from yes. all over the world. Yeah. They're in, you know, if they're in town, they're checking out, they're with the family, checking out some baseball, a uh-huh, little, yep. little ball and bat. Uh, they, they, they come in and, and play in tournaments with us or just dropping by to say yeah. hello and, and have a good time. Uh, We've flipping. probably met like 40 people from the North specifically yes. just in the last couple of weeks that have come and said hi to us that yeah. they're in town for Man, the baseball. It. Yes, mm-hmm. yes. Good, good, good deal. Um, so inside of Connected, log in, get your badges, uh, do some March Madness. And, um, you know, we've been chatting with them uh, or I have about, yeah. about doing something like March Madness, but a little bit different. Yeah, I'm excited and about I, the thing that you guys have been talking yeah, about. Yeah, and, and I hope they can work that into the program. We can't announce it. No, no, we can't talk about it because it's still in the works. But once it, if it uh, sees the light of day, I think we'll make sure that you know about it. It'll yeah, be fun. Everybody will really enjoy this. Yes. Um, good thing. Anything else? Nope. You you want to get right on to it? Let's move I got, on. I got some I got some stuff going on here. Um, I thought this would be a cool podcast to talk about this, this one thread I read on, on Reddit, I read it Mm -hmm. on Reddit, uh, on our pinball. Okay. Um, and I, and I, it, it, it's a, it's about, basically it's about, it, it was started by someone who has, uh, some, a, a couple who is, who wants to start a pinball bar. A pinball centric bar uh, slash restaurant, um, um, and he was asking for some some help, some tips, and what have you on their behalf. On their behalf, um, and uh, you know, as I'm reading these things, I was like, man, did, did, some of these people are just off base. I, I don't think they're um, purposely giving out disinformation. You know, it's just, you know, on, on the internet, you get a, a lot of, well, I don't think it's just the internet. In in the world, there are people who have various opinions that might not be uh, spot on for a certain industry. So you're telling me that there's people giving advice on the internet that don't have the experience or know what they're talking about. No, it's not just the internet. It happens in the real world, too. <laughs> Most definitely. It's, just, it's amplified on the internet because yes. uh, I think people... They're they're willing to say more yes. when, when their face isn't uh, uh, behind everything or in front of everything. So I have not read this thread, but you mentioned it to me mm-hmm. the other day because mm-hmm. it was it's something that's been coming up in real life as well. Yes, we have all kinds of people coming to us um, more than ever, saying, "Hey, I want to start. I want to do what you do." Mm-hmm. Um, and in the past, this has been people who have been collectors and people who kind of were already on the trajectory uh, to expand and go into doing e- either operating or opening something. And it's always made sure. sense. And that was part of the reason that we did this podcast, because we wanted mm-hmm. to share our experiences to maybe help others. But now me and you are seeing, I mean, just in the past couple of weeks, several people who have no experience at all. One of them is my neighbor, who, as far as I know, has not even played pinball since high school, which, you know, we're talking decades ago. But he decided, he just sent me a text saying, hey, I'd like to Mm. basically do what you do. How do I do it? Like, fascinating. It is the weirdest. And and, uh, 
my biggest takeaway from this is wow, pinball's really taken off. Right. To where you have people who have, you know, he's asking you, where do I find these things? You have people who have no idea about the industry, about the business. Uh, about any aspect of this going, how do I get involved in it? Right. They have no idea what they don't know, but they're so excited about it because Mm -hmm. they see it everywhere. And it looks like so much fun. So, hey, I'd like to do it too. Right. And that brings us to uh, a few questions and comments. Um, Let's. I want to go into, and I I think I'll just uh, briefly uh, summarize the uh, the post on Reddit. Um, Reddit. I would like some advice for some friends opening a new pinball cafe. Uh, hey guys, some family friends of mine are opening a pinball cafe on our town's downtown Main Street soon, and they asked for my advice to help them pick out some good tables that their distributor had available. Uh, their model will be to charge $1 per play, and they'll offer canned bottled beers uh, and non alcoholic drinks. That's smart, as well as ice cream. I like ice cream. Snacks and sandwiches for uh, from other local businesses. This is kind of smart because uh, uh, we might get into this, but a kitchen, the overhead on the kitchen is just uh, insane. Unless you're really into kitchens. So that's the smartest thing. Yeah. They, they already know what's going on here. Plus there's some cross promotion available there. That's right. Um, I'm not sure the demand will be high enough to actually make a profit from machines and concessions, though. I'm a little worried for them. Um, and, and that's basically it. And then we get into the, the, the comments. Okay. So my first question for these, Mm -hmm. for, for this, and you know, we don't know. So unless you happen Mm -hmm. to know from the comments is it sounds like they have no machines. Is that your interpretation? It looks like they're trying to acquire machines, but they currently have none. It's, it's, it's not clear, um, But it it does kind of seem like this. So, and I'll I'll read the last paragraph. For those curious, the machines they'll start out with are Jurassic Park Venom, Deadpool, Foo Fighters, Stranger Things, Spider-Man, and Terminator 2. Uh, So they'll start out with those. So I don't know if they already have those, but they want to get more. But anyway, so there you go. So a bunch of... Those are all new Stearns plus T2. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Spider Man's not. It was medium stern. I mean, <laughs> old medium Spider Man. <laughs> I like Spider Man. That's a good game. Sure. Um, so the, did you uh, did you have any from from, from that from right there from Jump? Mm-hmm. The way I interpret this is that they um, perhaps don't have a lot of experience with machines if they're looking to buy. All new ones or many new ones. Right. And this is the biggest caution that I have for people that are really excited about doing this. Um, If you don't have experience fixing them, you really need to know somebody that does. Even new Mm -hmm. Stearns break. It's a pinball machine, as you like to say. Mm Mm-hmm. It's a it's a steel ball rolling around hitting a bunch of breakable parts. Correct at high velocity. That's right. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's funny that you mention that because the most upvoted comment mm-hmm. opens up with that. I own an arcade bar, and the best advice is if they don't have a skilled tech, they should not do it. Hundred percent, hundred percent. Hopefully, they are experienced and know how to fix games. If and if they do, and they keep their games well maintained, then they can potentially make it work. I'm going to upvote that from like here. Can uh, I upvote that? That uh, is. Exactly, I already did. So that's, that, that's good advice in your opinion. That is. That's the best advice because here's the thing. Like mm-hmm. you, I believe that you need to have years of experience under the hood Mm -hmm. before you can um, maybe embark on the stress on having games on public play. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't know how to fix things quickly, then you're going to have games that are down and that looks bad and people, it's not fun. Like you don't want to go into a place with seven machines and three of them are down. Sure. 
Right. Um, and also, it like if you don't know how to fix them, it, like that, that's just a lot of stress on you. Mm-hmm. If, Oh, like, I don't know what's wrong. How do I do it quick? Let me FedEx the parts overnight. And then it's the wrong parts. Right. Right. All that stuff. Um, and it takes a couple of years of hands-on experience, you know, to, to get to that point. I, I believe, what do you think about that? Yes. I concur with all of that. Excuse me. Um, it, and also to uh, to add to that, this is a full time job. This f- if if, yes. if you're if you're getting the kind of play that's going to pay the bills, this is a this is a full time job. Even just cleaning, like the yes. simple stuff anyone can do, you know, um, cleaning the glass. It, it is so important. We we've been to some arcades that have like the most like expensive machines in the world and they are just like filthy. Yeah. Um, well, you can like rub your finger across the glass and there's just residue on it. Mm-hmm. I mean, just like this, this is a full-time job. Yes. Um, clean both sides of the glass. That's, I, I still see operators that don't do that. Yeah. And, um, and, and, and I think they, they think it takes too long. It is it is worth it. Please do it. You, you know, you, you pull the glass out, flip it over, pop it back in, clean the bottom, flip it back over, clean the top. Um, so important. There, I mean, I don't... All that coil there's dust. There's dust the inside dust, the machine. Right. All the stuff that's on the play field mm-hmm. is not just on the play field. It's floating around in that right. world under glass, and a lot of it sticks to the underside of the glass. That's right. Uh, and I see experienced uh, operators not doing that, and you, mm-hmm. can, you can see it because there's a reflection of the LEDs or incandescent lights mm-hmm. that are hitting the bottom of the glass. You can see it like kind of fan out. Yeah, and, yeah. and there, there's all kind of... Like, like like shit on <laughs> yeah on the on, under the glass like clean that that, that stuff yeah. gets dirty too yeah and you don't have to clean the bottom this mm-hmm. like every time you clean the top Correct. it's not that often right right but if you open up a game clean both sides or if yes. you start to see it mm-hmm. in in Arizona for us mm-hmm. it's it's very dusty yeah. we clean the glass every day six we'll say six times a week sure. every single machine yep top of the glass is clean when you can when okay. you can really notice the underside of the glass getting dirty is is with spotlights a mm-hmm. lot of the time the, yeah. the spotlights on on certain machines you know you, you just have a streak of light you know it's it's reflecting off of the the dust and, and grime on the on the inside of yeah that. you shouldn't be able to see that you should only see an illuminated play field it should look like a window like clear even if it's not in mm-hmm. glass or right any of the other high-end non-reflective stuff 100 um what what if you you had uh somebody or even, or even a couple like I, I think this is it sounds like it's like a, a married couple doing this or or don't assume marriage or, yeah we don't uh, living together cohabitating <laughs> um, a permanent fixture couple and they want to get into business um a pin lawyer would probably say don't do that yes or, but uh <laughs> but here we are um so <laughs> Uh, it worked for us, but, yeah. but we we're, but we love spending twenty four hours a day together. Together, we're not a unicorn. Every, <laughs> that uh, it's kind of rare here. Can say that. Um, Some what, couples do better with a few hours apart. Th- there you go. What if you had uh, people that wanted to get into this uh, into a, like a pinball centric bar, and they have a tech. Um. Now, what would scare me is like, what if that tech moves? We've seen we've seen this. We've happen. seen this recently. Uh, very popular um, arcade here in town. Their their tech is leaving, mm-hmm. and they're having trouble. Good good pinball and arcade techs are sometimes impossible to find. It took us five years to add John Chapel right. to the mix, mm-hmm. and it wasn't because I I didn't want you know I. I would have wanted him from the get-go. Right. And and plus, there are a lot of people out there that call themselves techs who aren't really at the level to uh, be able to do this stuff. And you kind of have to uh, vet these people. And usually, yeah. uh, pinball is such a, a small community. It usually happens by word of mouth. You know, you go, uh, yeah. you know that guy blew up my, one of my boards <laughs> and cost me $1,000. <laughs> That's so, true. Yeah. Um, now I don't have a transformer, yeah. all this stuff. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. 
cool advice. So here's another thing about that. Uh -huh. If you are lucky enough to have access to a great tech and mm -hmm. you're starting a business and there's seven pinball machines and you're selling sandwiches and soda, beer and ice cream. Yep. I'm thinking about you're paying rent, mm -hmm. you're paying insurance on the business, you're paying for all of the costs that go along with that, plus mm -hmm. the cost of those pinball machines. So all of that, plus it has to presumably pay their bills unless they're just independently wealthy and this is a fun project. Mm -hmm. And then you have to pay for the tech on top of that. Mm -hmm. uh, so that is that is already off the top. That is a lot of overhead. Right. My advice to people going into this is always to start smaller. Start with like a route or put machines into an existing place. Mm -hmm. You don't want to have to pay the rent on the business. Um, you know, there's people that worry about, well, if I put my machines into this bar or whatever, like what happens if they shut the doors overnight and, you know, my, my equipment gets locked in there, all of those types of things. Like what happens if you get into this lease and you have on top of that, all this equipment and on top of that, the loans or however it is you acquire all this stuff. Right. And then it doesn't work out. Yeah. That's a whole lot more money. Certainly. You and can insure your property. Um, right. And recently, some people who wanted to start a, a pinball bar talked to us and talked to more to you. I directed them to you because I was a little busy trying to fix some stuff. They were talking about like getting a second mortgage on their home to buy a bunch of pinball machines. My eyes must have like just fallen out of their sockets with and that. You would You would advise people not to do that. My advice is to not do that because I'd like to sleep at night. And for me, <laughs> that would create so much anxiety right. to know that like now not only is my business at risk, but if my business fails, my home is at risk. Yeah, that is that's why, again, like it makes so much more sense for someone who's already in the hobby, who already has a few years behind him, has has several machines that they own free and clear in their mm -hmm. house. Right. Um there's just so much less risk. And that's me personally. I am very risk averse, especially, you know, that's just not my style. Sure. But I it, find me a person who says it makes sense to get a second mortgage to start an unknown business for which they have no experience, but think it sounds like a cool idea. Sure. Okay. What's What's next? Let's carry on. We're still in this thread from Reddit. Let me go to the next. Uh, boom. This is the next comment. Uh, the second highest upvoted comment. Have them join IFPA and set up regular tournaments to, and try to build a scene. Those are good games to start with. I guess talking about the games in the beginning, the right. Sterns and the, and those the are Sterns plus D two. That'd be a cool little tournament. Mm -hmm. Yep. I'd like to throw a few classics um, in the mix. Uh, Stern will send them swag to sell as prizes, but I'm not sure how to get that going. Make sure you have Insider Connect up and running. Make sure the location is on Pinside's map. That's some good advice. I don't know if Stern is going to send them swag to sell as prizes. Those two things don't make sense. Yeah. Are you selling it as a prizes? But either way, Stern's not going to send it to you except for, for a launch party generally. They do send you like a launch party kit. Yeah. Um, but that's not but like the something they always do. No, you don't just say, hey, Stern, mm. I've got an arcade. Please send me uh, $1,000 <laughs> worth of your stuff. I'd like to sell it, please. Right. Unless you Stern, that's not their business model. Unless you know somebody there. Um, yeah, that doesn't, that's, not a, that's not a thing that happens. Uh -huh. so, but the first part of that I agree with. I think you should set up some regular IFPA tournaments. But, but now, just so the, the terminology is, is known here, you... You don't join the IFPA. No. Well, I mean, you. I guess you would sign up. You would make an account, right? Buy like a player account, right? right. Also create tournaments, mm -hmm. but yeah, it, it's not like a membership model, right? Right. No, you just so sign you up. you uh, you create a tournament, create IFPA sanctioned tournament. Is I think what they mean. This is, and we've talked about how much in the weeds you can get uh, as far as tournaments go, and how to run a tournament, and how to get the most uh, whopper points out of your tournaments. Um, I think the best thing to do is to uh, make a Discord account and um, 
Join the Electric Bats Discord. Join, join the Electric Bats <laughs> Discord. If you want to join our Discord, go to electricbatarcade.com and click the podcast link and you can get in our Discord. Ask us questions. You know, we, we, we respond within like a couple of minutes. Um, but join the, is it the IFPA Discord? Yeah, they have a Discord as well. Um, and if you want to know how to get there, uh, join us and join our Discord and we'll let you know. Um, but that would be, that's a great, the, the tournament director's discussion is a gr- uh, great place to learn. I would, I would read it every single day if you want to get, start to get into running tournaments. Uh, a great place to learn about setting up tournaments uh, in the different formats. Well, and also once, like you said, really getting into the weeds about different rulings, um, hopefully that this is something you've participated in many IFPA sanctioned tournaments before you try mm-hmm. and run one. I Like there's a kind of a common thread that I'm seeing my advice here. Like you yeah. should do something <laughs> before. Imagine that. <laughs> Before you decide you're an expert at it and start like saying being a but professional, we we are seeing this uh, now. And actually, I used to see this when I first started working at Marco Specialties. Mm-hmm. Like people all of a sudden calling themselves pinball experts. Um, I think because maybe they read a couple of uh, pin side threads um, and they did one flipper rebuild, yeah. you know, and now now they're experts. Mm-hmm. Uh, so this is this actually is not new, but because the the popularity has grown, we're just seeing more instances. Mm-hmm. Because so you think it's still the same, like two percent? I think it's still the same of I, people, I'm, but I, now that's on a two million person base instead of a one hundred thousand person. One hundred percent, and I think this happens in any field or hobby, even automotive. Like, you know, you know, dudes, you know, somebody change buy, my oil, somebody buys a Subaru and starts racing it, and all of a sudden they're a Subaru expert and, and they're racing with people who have been doing it for 20 years, mm-hmm. you know? Um, yeah. So I, I, I don't think this is, um, unique to, to pinball. I agree. People are enthusiastic about any hobby. Like mm-hmm. I can see how you would want to like thrust yourself from, from novice to expert because it's something mm-hmm. that's really really cool right it's right. you you wish that you had all of that un- you you mm-hmm. want the experience but sometimes you have to deal with linear time right right <laughs> i know and when you uh, we we that we still we know how much we don't know Yes. And like, and we'll tell people, we're not afraid to tell people, oh, I don't know. I'm going to have to look at it, do a little research. Beats me. Um, but, the, you know, there's a new blood of people who are like, oh, I, I know exactly what's up. And, um, yeah, it's, and I'm going to open a steer pinball clear. bar. Yeah, steer, steer clear of, of these folks. Um, let's move on to the next comment. This comment, and I'm and I'm not mentioning any of these Reddit usernames, just to you know, if if you want to find it, go to our pinball, and you can scroll back a, a you know a week and 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 find this whole thread. I just I, I, you know I don't feel right without asking them if I sure. can because some of these people are well known folks in in the pinball game. I see. Like this this particular comment, and this is what kind of threw me off because I I know that I I don't know this person personally, but they have been in the business uh for a, for a while um and he, here's here's the comment you don't make money off of games you make it off everything else they should consider doing some paper entry times like monday nights is free play with a 15 dollar cover what whatever the slow nights are just to get some good business in the door what? We make our money off pinball, right? Um, that, that's that's the first thing when I saw this. I was like, and I even jumped in and and commented. Uh, but the, the first sentence: "You don't make money off games; you make it off everything else." I've heard this from people locally, also. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, go. What's your opinion on well, that? Well, I think that there's a lot of people um, that that maybe are thinking about it that way that are using the pinball to make the regular spot like like to liven up their regular mm-hmm. bar and restaurant right um i 
for us, that is not the case. So for mm-hmm. some people, I'm sure it's the case. I mean, this is the model that we see a lot with the handing out of tokens, like mm-hmm. buy a drink, let me give you a bunch of tokens. Mm-hmm. But what we have found and um, a lot of people also would agree with that that devalues the value of your games. Mm-hmm. Um, not the game itself, like for resale, but it, it values devalues the experience, right? Because mm. it's a bunch of free stuff. You can just, um, right? Uh, I guess ultimately, I I don't agree with that. That you can make money off of the games. Mm-hmm. I think for us, we're also a unique um, case. Not like the only people, but we're. We have a uh, an amazing community that is really into pinball. Yeah. And it took a long time for a lot of people to build this fantastic Arizona pinball community. 100%. And and you're not just just to be clear for the audience, you're not just talking about the Electric Bat community. You're talking about the Arizona. Yeah, I'm talking it was the, the, va- the Phoenix Valley. area yeah. pinball community. Yes, and that was mm-hmm. that was a lot of us over a lot of years, um more than a decade right. of of working kind of towards building this and 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 I've noticed it just uh how long have I been here? 5 years? 5 years. I've noticed it in five years. Mm-hmm. There's a there are way way more pinball machines on the streets here mm-hmm. now than there were. Uh, but you actually, you and friends started promoting arcades and pinball many years ago, and and this is the, the long tail where we right. are where we are right now. This is not an overnight success. This is a decade in the making. Yes. And there's other places. The Pacific Northwest comes to mind as a mm-hmm. place that has just a huge pinball community. And, and they, I think, can support this sort of stuff. If you are in a small town that may not have a community, mm-hmm. then maybe it does make more sense for you to assume that y- your um, patronage, your your financial stuff is going to come from other things. And this is the beginning of that Mm -hmm. long tail to introduce the people to pinball. Um, I, I guess I want to be sure and say it is definitely possible to make the money off the coin drop. 100%. I've seen it. Mm -hmm. I've seen what you're doing and um, with proper budgeting and most importantly, marketing, Mm -hmm. these machines can make lots of money. Marketing is a huge part of this too. It's not right. an, if you build it, they will come. Mm-hmm. You don't just open a sandwich shop with seven pinball machines mm-hmm. and then all of a sudden everybody flocks to you because they saw the Roger Sharp pinball movie. Correct. Um, that's that's just not right. how reality is and, and I, and I or th- in any other industry. And I think that's uh, what happens sometimes. Uh, people buy some very nice machines, put them into a bar and they... Um, are wondering why they're only making twenty twenty dollars a week, right? Um, and then when that happens, they go, "Oh, this doesn't work." Right, You're, the money is on the beer and the tacos. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Fantastic. I love your opinion on. All I also, that. you know, I want to add. I did make roughly eleven dollars on selling uh, potato chips yesterday. <laughs> so, I mean, I don't want to say like I don't make money off. Yeah, you have to diversify. You got to diversify. You have to. We we sell we sell chips. You bought a chip rack. <laughs> I bought a chip and then, rack. And then a chip chips and cookies assortment. And Mostly for myself because I love chips so you much. Really, you really you're a chip expert, <laughs> and, and you love you have many different chips. Some chips I've so never chips even Ahoy, seen. Chips even? Ahoy, mm-hmm. uh, Oreos, and uh, there's little pandas yeah. with, uh, filled with chocolate. Yeah, um, yeah, that that that's cool, and that's working chips out. Chips and desserts, but. Uh, I think the takeaway from this comments is, I mean, this guy, and this guy has experience. Mm-hmm. Just just to tell people you don't make money off games, that is just 100% not true. Yeah. And I'm sure there are a ton. I mean, we know people who only operate. Think of Next Level Pinball up in mm-hmm. Hills, Hillsboro, outside of Portland. They've got, got a couple hundred machines mm-hmm. there now. To my knowledge, they don't sell any food or drink. They may right. have a chip rack as well. Sure. But I believe 100% of their money comes from... Is that Rob from, Burks? No, no. That's Jordan and Fred. Oh, Jordan and Fred. Next yeah, level. yeah. But, I mean, these are like wealthy people, right? 
Well, I don't. Um, I don't. I would not consider them wealthy no. beforehand. Okay, like, so that's actually that business is operating on its own. I don't know their. In, okay. I don't know their financials, but I. Um, mm-hmm. I I don't know. Um, but but no. How do you know, how do you become a pinball no millionaire? A millionaire? Or you start out as a billionaire. That's right. Yeah, and that's. I don't. I don't think you're going to become a millionaire doing this stuff, but you can make a living and have a hell of a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, so, so there you go. Um, let's let's see what other other comments we have here. Um, oh, this is good because I was going to ask you about the um, uh, uh, coin drop or or the, the what was it called where you pay one price and you and you the free play. Yeah, the free play, free play. model. Okay. Um, this is this is the next comment. Um, I've always liked the option of paying twenty dollars for at least two to three hours of playtime. That's expensive, isn't it? Well, it depends on how. Because like it depends on your skill level. Well, <laughs> right? I mean, <laughs> but our friends at Wedgehead don't they play like under twenty bucks? I don't for, know how much Wedgehead. I can't. We talked about it on the podcast with them. I think it's a little. Uh, it's not quite this expensive. Um, Okay, this guy likes paying $20 for at least two to three hours of playtime. Uh, anyone staying that long is bound to have a few drinks and make it a dollar will make me stop playing when I run out of coin. But for three hours, I'll force myself to stay there longer and consume to get the most out of my playtime while I eat and drink. Consider this option maybe on your slower days. Uh uh, that's, so they're saying that's the do, just a, do the free play model. I don't. I, and somebody else in a comment mentioned this where you flip flop, like like one day it's this and the next day I I do I don't think you you should do that. No, I think I think you should. Me and you operate you by consistent. the by the kiss principle. Yes, yes, absolutely. I want people to know what to expect, whether mm-hmm. it's Monday at five thirty, Tuesday at midnight. You know. I believe in consistent hours, consistent pricing, Mm -hmm. Uh, because I know that that's one of the things that the card system, people that use the swipe system, when they're trying to sell you a card system, they say you can do happy hour pricing or do, you know, variable pricing. Wendy's tried to do something recently. Uh, How'd that work out for them? They got blasted on social media. Wendy's, the beloved social media users, got their ass handed to them for, yes, but again, because I always think about operating Electric Bat as the arcade that I want to go to, and I don't want to have to think about, like, it, let's say I was going to go to the grocery store and buy some bananas. Mm-hmm. I know that I go to Trader Joe's, you know, between the hours of 8 a.m. and 9 p.m., and bananas cost 19 cents each. Mm-hmm. I don't want to think about. Well, it's 4.30 on a Monday, so they might be 25 cents. But if it's Tuesday, I can go and get five bananas mm-hmm. and just pay one. Pr- like that right. just it makes no sense to me. I don't right. like it. Right. Now, that's a fact. <laughs> it's a fact that I don't <laughs> like it. It's a, well, it's a fact. It doesn't, it doesn't make sense. I want, I, want the, I want the same thing uh, uh, all the time. People have a lot to think about in their daily mm-hmm. life. So whenever you're thinking about adding yourself to their life, mm-hmm. don't make it hard. Right. Boom. There you go. I like that. Let's see if we can find some more comments. Uh, <laughs> this, this, what's up? I like this guy. Okay. So they have the plans and money to open this place, but don't know what pins they should have on location. I would think anyone who knows pinball enough to want to open a business would have all of them on lock. Done. <laughs> I, I need no, like... <laughs> Just check mark agreed next. Right. What the fuck? <laughs> it's like <laughs> then you ask it. Well, okay. Let, this is this the is, friend. This is the friend trying right. to help him out. But the and it's a family friend, so he's close to him. Mm-hmm. But he's also like these people don't know what they're doing. I need to go ask Reddit. But he's also, worried. About, he's worried about him. But. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's true. <laughs> when when the friend is like, eh, I don't know, yeah. guys. Let me go ask the Reddit of all places. It's like when when the dog looks at your food and yeah. kind of cocks his head, like eh, yeah. I don't know. That's- but actually, you know, um, our our pinball on Reddit is not that bad. It's not pinside. 
Yeah. It, uh, but this is this is also again Yes, we're talking about this particular Reddit thread, mm -hmm. but you and I can both think of several recent examples of real life people talking to us in person, asking very similar questions. So we know this is yes, this is in the air right now, right? Which right. is why we're doing this podcast today. Yeah, yeah. You should you should know. Um, you should right, and it, and I think this is a also. A, a, a great piece of advice pinball's hot mm -hmm. so people and that's not the advice uh <laughs> done pin, pinball's hot right now mm -hmm. so i think people are like i need to strike while the iron's hot yeah right without let's mo quickly mortgage the house let's do quickly all these do that things. um don't i don't. want to get in on it like bitcoin it's don't really moving up like love this uh, hobby, love this sport, love this industry, get into it, spend a few years uh, researching it, owning a machine. I know, I know people want to get in the pinball business that don't, don't even own a machine. You know, yeah. um, I like, mean, you just have to own a machine, uh, break it, fix it, play the shit out of it. Um, enjoy it with friends. Accidentally use Novus 3 in your playfield and destroy this part of it. That's right. And then do a playfield swap. Uh, uh, we didn't do that, by the way. That right. was not us, get, but get, we know somebody Get did. into the culture, the tournament culture, um, and, and, and really the, the, understand the people that enjoy these games. Mm -hmm. You know, um, like, like pump the brakes. This is... Um, this is should already be your community because then you have built-in marketing. Right, right, right. Cool. Let's see if there are any other comments on here. Uh, <laughs> maybe, maybe not. This is a, well, let, let's just jump into it. There's a bar with six pinball cabinets near me. They have a, they have weekly tournaments and generally operate as a bar. They charge twenty five cents per play. Man, that's a freaking deal. I don't care. What, I don't care what game that is. That's awesome. Um, and this is in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Um, twenty five cents a play is going to be really hard to make money on because mm -hmm. um, parts are you, you need to buy them and they cost money. Pinball requires regular maintenance. Yeah, so it it can't. 25 cents is too cheap. Right. Like some places do uh, do that and they think it's going to keep people in there playing them more, but they play the machines more. They're breaking the parts. These parts are very expensive. Uh, yeah. All that, all that stuff you mm -hmm. said. And again, um, I think you need to find a medium between where somebody values mm -hmm. it. Like it's fun, but I want to try really hard at getting better because, you know, it, it mm -hmm. That's that's hard to do off a nickel yeah, quarter. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And this guy, this guy has a lot to say. Um, his his opinion is he would make a cafe that people, uh, cafe bar restaurant, whatever he says, mm -hmm. cafe, uh, make a cafe that people want to go to and let the pinball be more of a decoration because <laughs> that's probably how it's going to end up. This is wow, that's a real downer. Yeah, that um, is. They have no faith. In right, right. The OP. At a quarter a play, I'm fine playing a bit of pinball with my drinks, but at a dollar, I personally wouldn't have the same interest. This is this is not a pinball player. That's not a pinball player. But it's player. interesting because this is... Yeah, why is that person in our pinball? Yeah, what the... Uh, down, I'm a down vote that. Do it. Okay. Boom. What an interesting thing that there's somebody who doesn't care enough about pinball to mm -hmm. pay more than a quarter a play that reads our pinball yeah why now the the comment right underneath him is one dollar is pretty much the norm now unfortunately unfortunately for a dollar you you're playing a uh, uh, nine ten twelve sometimes fifteen thousand dollar machine mm -hmm. yeah i mean i don't think people think of it like that no they don't know um they don't understand that oh and now Which is possibly a reason to the very next comment Modern games warrant one dollar or three for two. Twenty five cents doesn't even keep them well maintained. Let's, upvote that. Let's upvote That's that. You log agreed. into your Reddit account and upvote it also. I don't think I've been on Reddit in like two years. Really? It's a good time. I don't. I don't really. It, well, it depends which subreddit you go to. You know, like uh, public freakout is good. I don't think that's good for you. <laughs> 
Uh, I, I follow RBJJ. That's a good one. That's a good one. A lot of people worried about ringworm. And, oh, and maybe it's not a good one. You know, it. I said it's a good one, but maybe I should <laughs> like check it out before I give the thumbs up. Okay, let's move on to another one. Um, okay. Here's another comment. Not a whole lot of upvotes, but it's still valid. And we um, okay. Let's see what they have to say. Yeah, we find validity in all of these folks. Mm. Uh, wonderful comments. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it might be for just for comedy. Okay. <laughs> Knowing a couple of people who do or have operated pinball cafes. What was this pinball? I've never Maybe heard it's pinball European. cafes. Cafe. What are like, you talking about? I, mean, I think it's like European. Oh, yeah, you get a, a croissant. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah, and uh, enjoy your pinball. Uh, we speaking of croissants. We saw the world record largest chocolate croissant. It was like we, we go to a great uh, French cafe. Eighteen is, inches. Is it a French, would you call it a French cafe? Or I would. Uh, and they have J L Patisserie. Oh, it's let's good. give them a shout but out. But she made Central Phoenix. She made a um, a birthday a chocolate croissant. Oh yeah. That is. I was about to say size of a football, but it's bigger than that. Much bigger. It's much much bigger. It's like it's, eighteen inches. Whew, I'll okay. tell you what. Uh, pinball cafe knowing a couple of people who do or have operated pinball cafes my advice to you would be to not open one at all (laughs) (laughs) Uh, that's not bad advice (laughs) Uh, Eddie uh, goes on to say lol yeah (laughs) Yeah. that's the entire comment Uh, no no hold on Uh, basically after financing and maintenance the pinball machine themselves are not going to make you money the money is made on the cafe we've already touched on that Mm -hmm. Um, that's not entirely true if you do it right Uh, but machines take a lot of space so lots of pins equal more space equal higher rent and rates or less desirable location less uh, equal less profitable cafe Long and short, you probably need to find a great location or be based within a very active pinball scene to make it add up. Regular events and leagues on your quieter days are an absolute must. This turned out to be very that's insightful. Good advice. So we we were having a conversation with some other um, owners of pinball bars mm-hmm. um, about this very thing about. Do I expand? Do I not expand the Mm -hmm. increase in rent versus the increase in square footage? Where is that sweet spot? And that's going to be different for everybody, but that's a very true statement about it. Pinball machines do take up a lot of space. Mm -hmm. Um, And so, like, just a, a very quick backstory for us we owned these pinball machines, um, or I. I owned them mm-hmm. when we first opened up and right. I partnered, uh, you know, Mark Pearson has several machines in there that he owned. We did not finance any machine that went into this. They were, you know, to this day, there's right. uh, between the <clears throat> two of us on, I mean, we've got 75, hundred machines. Mm-hmm. We own them all free and clear. Uh, if we had to finance that, that does eat a, a huge amount into the money that you have to make. And also, mm-hmm. we should s- state the other thing about us is we have no children. Mm-hmm. We don't have the expenses that most families do. I bought this very modest home a long time ago. I paid it off a while ago. Mm-hmm. Um, we own our cars. We don't have the personal overhead that requires us to make massive salaries. Our lifestyle is great fun, mm-hmm. but we're not f- riding first class to the Bahamas <laughs> every weekend. <laughs> right. um, so I think people need to look at, we don't have student loans. Like right. all of these things that people have for their monthly bills, their monthly expenses are are probably a lot higher than what ours are mm. just because of the way our lives ended up. So if you have to start adding financing pinball machines on top of your student loan, on top of, you know, your, your new forerunner, um, mm-hmm. God, that's expensive. Right. Stress. Sounds like stress. And the reason that people want to get into this hobby is because it is so fun. Right. Yes. And you don't want to turn something that's fun into something that's, that keeps you up at night. Mm-hmm. So think about that when you're thinking about starting a pinball business too. Like maybe you're better off just buying a couple of pinball machines and enjoying them at home and having some great parties. Yes. Inviting your friends over and they will love you for it. 
right? It's so much fun. Host tournaments at your house. Mm-hmm. Um, you don't have to make money off of a uh, sandwichery and <laughs> <laughs> and and Spider Man pinball. Yes. Um, so I guess like maybe ask yourself why do you want this? Is it because it's mm-hmm. very popular right now and you would like to be very popular? And if that's the case, nothing wrong with that. Buy some machines, put them at your house, home invite arcade. people over. Home, we know plenty of people with home arcades. Killer home arcades. And they are having a blast, and they're not worried about turning a profit. Yeah, and you know what? Mm-hmm. If they break down, it's no big deal. No stress. You f- you fix it when you have time, or you can hire somebody to come over right. and fix it when they have time. Now, I've, I've heard you say this in the past, and I want to see if it still uh, uh, is true. Um, you have suggested... That, uh, well, you have machines or maybe like acquire a few uh, machines, but then, then partner with a bar. Yeah. Um, and, and instead of doing this all, all your own, Mm -hmm. doing every aspect of it, you know, the, the, the overhead of running a kitchen is a, is a gigantic pain in the ass Mm -hmm. and all that stuff. Um, do you, do you still say that that's where people should start? Like find a bar that doesn't. Whether there's a hole in their entertainment and and fill that. To me, that makes sense, right? Because Mm -hmm. owning um, an arcade is one set of skills and expenses. Owning a bar is a second set of skills and expenses. And owning food, kitchen, whatever, is Mm -hmm. a third set. Those are three different things. So, and having an arcade and a bar... There's very little overlap mm-hmm. in that, except you're going to be paying the same rent. Like the rent part overlaps, but the skill sets, not necessarily the same. I don't know much about operating a bar. I wouldn't want to jump into that. Mm-hmm. It, um, I would like to find somebody that already knows, and that's their passion, and they're good at it. Right. Um, and a lot of the successful people that we know are partnerships Mm -hmm. that way in in a lot of the different arcades barcades that you know people have heard of it's not usually one person that owns the bar part the pinball machines part Mm -hmm. fixes the pinball machines all of that it's i I think it makes sense and it's again low risk yes uh can you have a successful arcade without alcohol that is a good question. Um, I. What do you think about that? You think no, right? Um, well, or or no, weed, no. but that's not possible for us yet. I I I, I don't know because I know arcades that don't have alcohol that are successful, but it the, but it's a different business model. Mm-hmm. They're they're not. <clears throat> They sell a lot of chips. They sell a lot of chips. They sell a lot of snacks, but they they they're not open all the time. Mm-hmm. Just open on the weekends, um, and it, it's a completely uh, different uh, a business model, really. Well, locally, Starfighters is that way, right? But right. I don't believe that Starfighters is Starfighters is paying for itself. But mm-hmm. many of the people that are in that community also have other jobs, so that's sure. like that's a hobby business. I don't mm-hmm. want to say it's a hobby business in a derogatory way, but it, mm-hmm. they don't rely on it to pay five people's bills. Right, right, sure. Um, what Now, what about food? Can you have an arcade without food? I don't think you have to have a kitchen. I like the idea of partnering mm-hmm. with a locally successful um like sandwich, like somebody who already does something well. Mm-hmm. I, I believe in that. And I also really like the idea of these pinball collectives that are starting. And mm-hmm. I'm seeing that crop up more and more. Like we are f- five different people that have small to moderate collections mm-hmm. and we'd like to put it together and then have ours. And that's really what locally, what Starfighters, sure. how they started out. And maybe for some of these other people, that might be a way to 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 start a successful arcade make sure you get along well and have similar <laughs> right. visions because yeah. um, that then, can go it, sideways and if you have an event you get a food truck food trucks right yeah yeah have a good time um i i am 
uh, I think so. People in the uh, restaurant business, and it, and it's easy for them. They might have. They probably have a different uh, view on this than than I do. But I I would stay away from a kitchen or or, or partner up. Uh, our friends at, at Transmission Arcade in uh, in Columbia, South Carolina. Yes, they partnered up with uh, the Smoky Loggins and. And those folks make some amazing food, and they like they wouldn't agree to do anything until it was like a partnership. They didn't just want to lease space to them, right? They, they wanted, wanted to have a, a, an investment. So, yes, yeah, so smart, smart, so smart. Um, and and I've I've run uh, kitchens. Uh, my uh, back when I was a kid, my father had a, a pizza shop in, in San Diego, so I have some some experience. Um, pizza shop's actually great because there's actually really low overhead in pizza. If that's all you have, pizza, yeah. that's that's good. Do some pizza, um, but still, you you know, you need big, people like it. You need big, good ovens um, and and all this stuff. I would say, like, like get just get a hot dog roller and and, <laughs> yeah. and call it a night. You know, yeah. Um, I think it's important to have some kind of food because you don't want people to leave. Oh, you have to, something, so, but, but not a full blown, not necessarily not a, a full blown kitchen. Right, no, right. I think I think having, but but I like what you said about Transmission Arcade about how they they insisted on that partnership because if someone is just like leasing out your kitchen for I don't know a thousand dollars a month, I have no idea what what that would be, and then and then providing food, well, they might up and leave, and then all of a sudden you have. No, like you want people with with a very vested interest that want to market your business as much as you want to market your business. You want shared success. Yes. Uh, thank you very much. Let's move on to the. This is kind of funny. Um, I don't know if it's good advice or or what have you. Uh, if they're going to serve food, avoid finger foods. Oh, well, you know what? <laughs> Remember our brief stint with the popcorn machine? Oh, my God. That was insane. <laughs> that was... So uh, this was during COVID. Yeah. And what, what was it? Or maybe it was right before. I don't know. We had a popcorn machine. But, okay. So anybody running a business during COVID knows like counties, cities had just like fuck the stupidest fucking rules. It was. It was. Um, and so part of the rule for playing pinball was if you wanted to have a beverage, like, of course, people want to have a beer or a mixed drink while they play, a glass of wine. They had to have some food and they had to be seated. So you had to bring them a stool. Um, and if they did not have a stool, that they, they couldn't, they, they couldn't have a beverage in yeah. front of them. You had to be sitting down. It was just like the dumbest shit. It was crazy. So, but long story short, mm-hmm. we had a popcorn machine for mm-hmm. a very short amount of time because, wow, was that a mess? I, of course, it was. There right, was, like, there was grease all over everything. Duh, <laughs> duh. Um, so yeah, I, yeah. Uh, um. We have lots of hand sanitizer all you know all around the arcade. I think there's like seven or eight bottles just spread out everywhere. Right, right. Uh, now th- this comment somebody just had. Uh, it's just a suggestion. Get Godzilla, Iron Maiden, Toy Story, Jaws, TMNT, Rush, Mandalorian, Deadpool, Attack from Mars, and Foo Fighters. Okay, that's so a he's nice kinda, modern. Di- he's directly actually. answering the question. Yeah, and that was good. Except for uh, TMNT, if you just want to like piss people off, uh, that's a hard game. It's a very hard game, <laughs> but I think the license is attractive to yeah. casual players. Yeah. So that's it, a beautiful game. It, in the in- right environment, that that's a game that makes sense to have. I. I all of these people are foregoing the classics, which is, again, why I'm so happy to be having Chewy's uh, mm-hmm. All Classics. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Tournament. Uh, next comment. To be honest, a buck a play would make me not want to go there. Free play here. And he has a link. I'm not going to click on it. Um it must be some arcade he goes to, charges $12 for an entire night's playing, unlimited play, including all the new Sterns. They're not here to make money off the machines. They make money from the bar. There's more to this, but I want want to stop right there. We know operators, uh, popular arcades that do this model. We just talked to some guys and they, they are making money off of that. Yeah, they they told us our yep. we, you know we talk numbers. 
And so, I mean, I think this person is just assuming, a lot of people are just assuming stuff and not knowing how the sausage is made. You, you, We see a lot of sausage. We see a lot of sausage. Um, but that, that, that's for a different cast. Yeah. <laughs> um, so the, ah, no pineapples here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, um, he, he goes on to say, um, if you're doing a bar, that's your cash cow, not the machines. That, that's just not true. This person doesn't know what they're talking about. Um, I think it can be true. It, it can be. Think of the machines as decoration, stage Ugh. acts, or ambience. A way to get people in to eat or drink. Don't look at them as a revenue center other than the basics. This guy's completely off base. I think that that, that offends my heart whenever I hear people say, yeah. think of the pinball machines as decorations. Yeah. That's why so your, many Your pinball... mom's a decoration. Oh. How about that? Yeah, there you go. Um I think so many of these people have experienced pinball machines that don't work properly. Um, in that case, it is just a decoration, right? You got flashy lights and pretty art. Mm -hmm. A like that's that's that that's like the I don't know what you'd call them the big box operators. Yeah, the guys with the the trucks. Yeah, the, that that go around and put one or two machines in every as bar. As long as in the town. coin slot works, right? And they'll, works. They'll, 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 the machines wobble. That's yeah. maybe what this guy's. They've got one flipper about. and three light bulbs. Yeah, that's not what a pinball machine should be. You should always strive to have your pinball machines working one hundred percent. Um, th and. Yes, there is certainly a way, like, um, I'm not going to argue that somebody shouldn't open a free play style arcade because of course there's value in, um, having, because people are going to want to get their 12 or $20 worth mm -hmm. and they're going to stay for those three hours and they are probably going to drink whatever they're going to drink in those three hours or however long they have. Mm -hmm. Um, but man, that's. Like to think that that's the only way, and <laughs> that the pinball machines you should just think of them as decorations, right? Those are not people who think that way are not mm. people that should be operating um pinball arcades because that if that's your mindset about it, mm. you don't care enough to to treat them with the respect they deserve and to build communities around them that are going to support you right. uh, over time, right? Mm -hmm. What you're trying to do is get some Dave and Buster's kids in there, you know, once every six months to drink five beers and get your flippers all greasy. Yeah. Um, F that. Like that, that just, that is not, that's not the only way to do things. Certainly. Um, and, and this next comment uh, touches on something you've already brought up. Uh, I've thought about how I would do this for a while. Now I think I would go in the more private slash co-op direction than a public bar. Uh, charge a few members a monthly fee to have 24-hour access. That's cool. Like a, like a gym. Yeah. Um, and blah, blah, blah. Have a few beers on stock. Um I that's, think that's great. That's cool. Because if you do that, depending on your liquor laws, you could have a monthly membership mm -hmm. and you could have a BYOB. Um, yeah. You could have a building that would sustain itself mm -hmm. and you would have people, this is assuming that you have enough people that know how to fix machines. You have people that you can pool resources as far as parts and knowledge. And I think that's a super cool thing to do. You have built-in league support. There is, um, there's all kinds of reasons why that is, uh, I think, a great thing to do. Yep, good deal. And um, I think the, the the rest of the comments are um, more or less that more or less the 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 the, the, the stuff we've been talking about. Um, you know, there's a lot of a lot of the machines don't make money, um, which is just and and. That's that's one reason I really wanted to bring this up. Just the the idea that that these machines don't make money. I mean, they they have coin doors for a reason. Mm -hmm. You know these these things are are built uh, to to sustain their an initial cost, right? They, right. To recoup that. Mm -hmm. It's like saying that skee ball doesn't make money. Mm -hmm. We 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 would love to have that. The footprint's too big, but. 
Yeah, I mean, like, of, of, that is like uh, jukeboxes make money. Yeah. Um, this a uh, uh, coin. Uh, you know, I was I was reading an article where just like um, uh, the coin uh, coin operated stuff makes money. Laundromats kill it. <laughs> yeah. you, you know. Um, you know, a uh, uh, vending machines. And here's another cool thing about mm -hmm. it. You, let's say you buy a machine for $7,000. You make $7,000 in coin drop. Guess mm -hmm. how much that machine is still worth? I mean, depending on where we are in the market, mm -hmm. it's going to be worth somewhere between six and $8,000. Certainly. Very probably. Right. Um, so there's just, there's so many things that, um, there's a lot of people that, have opinions that they don't have any basis for having yep. just kind of some abstract thoughts and mm -hmm. um so but don't fret because we're here to fix that <laughs> on the electric bat cast the electric bat yeah. um cool i think i think that's a enough pinball talk we um if you have any other questions uh, or comments about that especially if you have experience we, yeah we want to hear from from people or i would love to hear comments from people that have no experience and state like hey i have no experience and i think this or i thought that mm -hmm. um just i think it's a really interesting discussion to be having right now right. when pinball is so popular that Everybody wants a piece of it, which Absol is great for us. Absolutely. I mean, How can people get in touch with us? They can email us at electricbatarcade at gmail.com. They can find us at Electric Bat Arcade across social media. Mm -hmm. um, and they can go on our website, electricbatarcade.com, and find links to the Discord. Yep. And the, the podcast. In the podcast tab. section. Um, Shout out to sponsors of the show, Marco Specialties. Go to uh, marcospecialties.com to get all your pinball parts. Stern Insider Connected. If it's uh, not a Stern, it doesn't earn, <laughs> right? <laughs> if you, I think it's if you wanted, to, yeah. If you wanted to earn, make it a Stern. But also, classic ballets are cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, also, classic ballets <laughs> and System One got me, Lord. <laughs> uh, We're still in that Renaissance uh, festival. Yeah, kick. Yeah, I was right, listening right, right. to some weird Renaissance festival music before we that's started. What, that's what kind of set the vibe for yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. Um, also, thank you to Game Room Goodies, always supporting us and uh, hooking up us up with the latest machines. And shout um, out to all of. The the other operators and arcade owners mm -hmm. that are doing it and doing a great job taking care of their machines. Yes. And uh, of mm -hmm. course, uh, like a bunch of those that, that did it before us and, and set us up to have this, this hobby Certainly. turned. Um, and after job. you are, that's a good point, Rachel. And after you <laughs> are done uh, listening to us, uh, change the channel, head over. You know what I've been listening to recently? Mm -mm. The Wormhole. Oh. pinball podcast it's good stuff cool on, on the latest one they had a, a tom graf oh yeah yeah and they had a, a really great I like and, tom yeah and these are short they're, they're really good um and and these people are, are so knowledgeable go, go check out them and then fade to the wedgehead pinball podcast we love those folks we yes were, we joined them uh for two episodes mm -hmm. um it's a it's a lot of fun um and the cool thing is these they're both uh operators um both podcasts um and the wormhole the most recent one talked a lot about streaming because of course they were talking to tom graff he's like one of the top yeah fox city streamers pinball. of competitive pinball um we really appreciate all that he has done and it's fun to hear from him finally without uh, all of the guys from triple drain over talking him <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So uh, go check that out, Wormhole Pinball Podcast. Um, I think we're out, unless you have any anything else to add. No, I think that's great. We want to hear from you. We very much want to hear from yeah, you. Yeah, please write in. We'll uh, answer any question. Let us know question. if you other operators have had these experiences, too, of people coming up to you with these um, somewhat ludicrous ideas. Right. Yeah. And if you have pinball machines in your arcade and they, and they don't make money, we really want to hear about yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, it's, we want to know if that's true. Yeah. Because some of these people might know what they're talking about. And we're, we're the on ones with egg on our face. <laughs> uh, okay. Thank you all for joining us. Uh, we are headed to the bat to play some more pinball. And we hope to meet you there soon. See you soon. The bats are out. Bats out. <laughs>